Hey everyone, good evening. I hope you're having an amazing Tuesday. And yeah, bear with me for a minute. Facebook changed their video production screen, and so I'm having to get used to it and uh, put things together. So, anyway, uh, tonight's video is entitled Deep Thoughts and Shallow Musings Stories, Anecdotes, and Your Questions. So thought we might have a little fun with this. I was discussing with one of my clients earlier today that now more than ever, you've got to use things like live stream so that people feel connected to you. And as a business person, that's something that's going to make a huge difference in the days to come. So the groundwork that gets laid now uh, will become very um, effective in the days to come because people will feel like they have gotten to know you and the uh, you know discussion was uh, that's a little uncomfortable for a lot of business people just putting your life out there for others to see uh, and, and what it really comes down to is it's the same as the fear of public speaking it's the fact that you might actually reject me and nobody wants to face the Direction. In fact, often what you find is uh, fear of public speaking actually outranks the fear of death because at least when you die, nobody's there to reject you. <laughs> and even if they do, you won't know about it. So same thing with, with putting your thoughts, your ideas, um, yourself out there in a forum just like this is, is you are opening yourself up to that and so for some people that's a, a large step now for those of you who are my clients who are watching this video I'm proud of all of you because I have seen almost all of you producing videos and I know almost all of you absolutely 100% didn't want to do it and so taking those steps has been a, a big step for you uh, some of you we've probably created a little bit of a monster we may have to reel you back in when this is all over but it's a, a great thing to be doing so uh, a couple of thoughts that I want to put out so the, the deep thoughts are this there's a principle in life on what you focus on expands and one of the things you find right now is people are either choosing to focus on the the negative the um, you know horrific news reports and what the media is trying to feed you and there are others who are looking for what are the bright spots in this what are the opportunities in this what are the positives in this what are the things that can really be building blocks of something special of course, I always like to go back to Scripture, and one of the, the greatest you know, examples of this principle comes from the Apostle Paul. And so in the book of Philippians, and understanding the context, Paul is in prison. He's writing a letter to the Philippian church, and one of the things that he's telling them is he's telling them, rejoice in the Lord always. And he repeats that statement in both chapters 3 and 4. But what you, you get the sense of as you're reading that is that the question was kind of hanging out there. Well, you know, how do I rejoice always when things maybe aren't so great? How do I rejoice always when things are not so good? How do I rejoice always when maybe everything is against me? And so the Apostle Paul gives really a framework, a formula for doing just that. And he begins to list out these things that you need to think on. Whatever's good, whatever's lovely, whatever's pure, whatever's honorable. He begins this list of things that if we'll begin to focus on those things, it becomes easier to rejoice in all things. And that's what I want pinpoint for you today is when you begin to focus on the 
better things. When you begin to focus on the positives, what you begin to see is more of those things. You'll begin to identify more of those things. So I always like to explain it this way. There's a, a principle called the reticular activating system. It's a, a concept of the mind. And what that concept is, is pretty simple. It's once you make your mind aware of we're looking for this thing, your mind begins to show you more examples of those things. And the easiest way to describe it is as you decide, I'm going to go out and I'm interested in buying a black Chevrolet Silverado pickup. And all of a sudden, you begin to see black Chevrolet Silverado pickups everywhere. Now, the truth is, they were always on the road. You just weren't looking for them. And so your mind would let those things drive past you and you pay no attention. But now, you've you've your subconscious mind to the fact that we are looking for this black Chevrolet Silverado pickup. And so now your subconscious begins to go, hey, there's one, there's one, there's one. So the same principle works both positive and negative. If you spend all of your time dwelling on the negative, you spend all of your time with constantly negative news on, then that becomes your focus. And because that becomes your focus, you find other things to become more negative about. And you begin to see more negativity in your environment, in the world around you. Everything begins to slip negative because you've conditioned your mind to look for the negative. But if you begin to look for the things that are positive, the things that are honorable, the things that are noble, the things that are lovely, you're going to begin to see more of those things. In business, one of the things that I teach my students is to look for the opportunities so that your mind is conditioned to see the opportunities that are around you all the time. In fact, one of the things that I teach my students is that there is money around you all of the time. You just walk past it most of the time because you've not conditioned your mind to look for where is the money at in this situation or this circumstance or this transaction and so many business people miss opportunities because they're not looking for the right things they've not conditioned their mind to do that so that's both a, a spiritual and a practical thought for you if you want to feel much better in these current days then you need to look for the things that are right in the moment you need to look for the things that are beautiful in the moment one of the things that's fun here at the house is in our front floor bed, we've got flowers that just started to bloom over the weekend. And so we could, we could see them getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, and finally started to bloom. And so now, wow, that's something to focus on. And in doing that, we're finding other things that are, are better to focus on. So one of the things I want to give you, it's kind of kind of fun here. So so like I said, deep thoughts and shallow musings. So we're gonna get a little little shallow here, so bear with me a second. Still well, still kind of deep, kind of shallow. Now uh, let me find it here. There it is. So so two things that I want to uh, we're gonna do show and tell tonight. So two things that, that I want to show you. So my my dad, actually three things. I'm going to show you. So we're going to talk about my, my dad for a minute tonight. So my dad was the, uh, he was the main disaster recovery planner for Bank 4. And then Bank 4 got bought out by Boatman's and he became that person for Boatman's. And then they got bought out by Nations Bank and he became that person. And then they got bought out by Bank of America and he did the same thing with them. So so his, his whole place in life was anticipating the worst case scenarios and planning for it so that those financial institutions could operate. So when he first took that role, he, he made this bank contingency plan. In case of emergency, break the glass. So, so that was my dad. That's, that's what he grew up with. He, planning for the worst. 
All right, so case of emergency, pull out the abacus if the tin key doesn't work, if the teller machine doesn't work, if the ATM doesn't work, you can always go back to the old trusty abacus. So then in uh, 1997, uh, there was a big flood here in Wichita, flooded the operations center for Nations Bank here in Wichita, and my dad was able to recover their data operations using hot sites in other parts of the country. So he won this award called the 24-7 365 Award. Uh, he actually won two of them. He won a second one for a disaster in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, this was the highest award that the bank gave out. So he had two of those, and so I, I keep this on my credenza. And, but I'm telling you all this. Here's what's interesting. So here's a guy who spent all of his life planning for the worst disasters. His nickname at the bank was Captain Disaster. But the thing I remember most about him from the time I was a little boy until the, the day that uh, he passed away, on his desk was always this sign. Expect the best. Back to what you focus on expands. So here's a guy planning for the worst case scenario, but this was this was his marching order. Expect the best. If I expect the best, I'll start looking for the best. And if I start looking for the best, I'll find the best. And I'll find that in situations. I'll find that in people. I will find that in all manner of, of things in life. If I will begin to look for the best, I'll find the best. And I'll find more of the best. And I'll find it more often. Because I've, I've conditioned my mind to look for what's best, what's right, what's appropriate in every circumstance. So anyway, those are uh, a few deeper thoughts than I really plan on. A little bit of shallow musing, a little bit of my history. And uh, I did say Q&A, so um, while I put these things up for a second, if you've got uh, some questions, they don't have to be business questions. They don't have to be spiritual questions. Uh, they can be crazy questions if you want to ask them. If I don't like them, I won't answer them. So uh, feel free to ask while I'm putting this up. Well, I'll take that as no question. So anyway, a couple things as we close out. Starting tomorrow, through Sunday, my book, Internet Marketing for Small Business, will be free on Amazon. I'll put a link out here on my page so you can uh, take a look at that, pick that up for yourself. That's actually my bestseller book that's uh, been on Amazon for a few years. Hope you find that helpful. Also, if uh, you're needing to find more of this stuff, I got a source for you. Hit me up and I'll put you on to that. And uh, other than that, you have an amazing night. And if there's anything I can do for you, if I can pray for you, if there are some things you need some counsel on, some advice, you just need a sounding board, by all means, reach out to me. Like most of you, I am, uh, you know, making the most of the time. And so I won't be here to serve you any way that I can. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you soon.